Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create some cool looking audio visualization systems using modifiers with Blender 2.8. The reason why I'm going to show you how to do this with modifiers is because it goes hand in hand with the Bygen add-on, meaning that you'll be able to combine the functionality to create all kinds of generative visualization results. Typically the most common and popular way to do audio visualization systems in Blender is with shape keys. We are not going to be using shape keys in this tutorial, but I'm just letting you know that it's a possible option and that there are other tutorials out there that already show you how to use them. What you're seeing on the screen now are demonstration blend files that you can of course download for free from the link in the description. Getting modifiers to react to a sound file is actually a really simple process. All we need to do is make a keyframe for the modifier value we want to change and then bake the sound data to F curves with a frequency range of our choosing. So let's take a look at how it's done. We're going to jump into a basic blend file that I've prepared earlier. What we have here is a camera looking at a cube which has a subdivision surface modifier at a level of 4. What we're going to do is give the object a displace modifier which will be used to modify the surface mesh data. In the displace modifier settings we will click on new to generate a new texture. Then we'll click the show texture and texture tab button to bring up the settings. In the texture type drop down I'm going to select musgrave but you can go with any generated texture that you like. We'll leave the rest of these settings at their defaults, but I should note that the method we'll be using in this video to change the modifier values can also be used to change the generated texture parameters as well, so you're free to experiment with these variables to see what kinds of other effects you can come up with. Now what we're going to do is go back to the modifiers tab and get ready to tell the displacement to listen to the audio. For this next bit I'm going to bring up a couple of new windows because we will need them in a moment. The windows we will need to be able to see are the timeline window and the graph editor. Now that we can see them, I'm going to go to the strength value of the displace modifier, then right click on it and choose insert keyframe. Upon doing this you will notice a coloured line has appeared in the graph editor. This represents the strength value of the modifier, and if I grab it then you can see that the higher the position of the line, the higher the value will be. Evidence of the keyframe can also be noted in the timeline window. The next part is telling Blender how to make the line in the graph editor respond to the audio input. What we need to do is first of all make sure that we are at the starting frame by pressing the first frame button in the timeline. Then we need to make sure that we actually have the strength value selected in the graph editor. If you're not sure about this then you can click away and then click back onto the line. Once you have it selected click on the key menu and then choose bake sound to F curves. This will open up a window where you can browse to any audio file that you want. For the purposes of this tutorial I have created a calibration file with some simple repeating beats which will be easy to see on the graph editor. Do not open this file yet, instead only single click on the file to select it as we will need to change some of the parameters on the left before baking the curves. The two values that are important to us are the lowest frequency and highest frequency values. With these we can tell Blender what frequency range we want to bake to the strength value of the displace modifier. What range you should use completely depends on the audio file you want to use and what kind of visual effect you would like to achieve. In the case of this demonstration I'm going to make our object pulse in response to lower frequency beats. An appropriate range for this would be a low value of 0 and a high value of 300. If you want some template values for other ranges then 300 to 2000 should be ok for mid ranges and 2000 to 10,000 should work for higher frequencies. Remember that how any of this translates into visual changes will heavily depend on your input audio file. Once you've entered the appropriate values then you can import the data by pressing the bake sound to F curves button in the top right. Once that's done, and depending on your magnification of the graph editor, you may immediately see a visual representation of the baked curve data. And now if you play the timeline then you can see the effect this has on the displace modifier. So that's the basics of how to get a modifier value to respond to an audio input. But if we want to go ahead and render this as an animation, then there are a couple of extra things that we should do. You'll need to set the end frame to the length of the audio input so the render doesn't stop too early. If you don't know what the end frame should be, then you should be able to find the end point of the baked data in the graph editor and then take the frame number from there. But something else we can do, which would also allow us to listen back to the audio from Blender in real time, is load the audio source into the video sequencer. Of course to do this we need to open up the video sequencer window, so I'm going to make room for that now. Once we have it in front of us then we can click on the add menu and choose sound. Just like before this will give us a screen where we can choose our audio file. If we go ahead and do that then you will see it appear in the editor. Since the frame indicator is synchronized between all of the open windows, then it's easy to find the frame that the animation should end on. You can enter the correct value into the end parameter in the timeline window. If you play the timeline now, then you should hear the audio playing alongside the baked animation. Congratulations, you've just created a simple modifier powered audio visualization. One of the really cool things about this is that once you've got the keyframed animation set up, you can continue to stack modifiers after the displacement to create all kinds of variations on the effect. 
As I said at the beginning, one of the reasons I wanted to show you the modifier way of doing audio visualizations is because it integrates really well with my freely available Biogen add-on for non-destructive generative modeling. For example, as you can see on the screen now, the holographic point cloud style that was added in version 2 of the add-on works extremely well with this. So feel free to download the demonstration files and also consider downloading a copy of the Biogen add-on. A massive thanks to everyone who has left donations on the free resources. I appreciate all of the support and you are the reason I can keep sharing tons of free content. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. You can follow me on social media to stay up to date and even join our Discord server to get sneak previews and upcoming content. As a side note, I have also set up a notify.me page for anyone that has expressed interest in using the service. So that'll do it for this video. Enjoy the content, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.